know you pissed off I ain't mean to dip off But I had to dip off Yeah, I had to dip off I was busy running to that green like a kickoff Now you ticked off Talking about I might get clipped on Damn, shorty I'm like, damn, shorty Why you tripping? I wasn't even your man, shorty Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome to today's video. Today I'll be showing you guys how to maintain your SE Blake, how to tune it up, you know, get it back to where it was when you first got it. Just a disclaimer, I am not a professional at all. This is just usually what I do to my bikes whenever my cranks start creaking and the whole bike starts getting dirtier. Yeah, so if anything happens, I'm just saying, that's all on you, nothing on me, you dig? First off, I got these new ODI grips from the bike shop, and I'll be boiling it so I can make it softer and stretchable. This, although, does sound good, but you do not need to do this at all. I just like doing this so I can make the grips softer and feel better. But this also does change the life of your grips so when you do this just be cautious because when you're doing this you might accidentally just break the grip when you're stretching it out so just keep that in mind but it does feel so much better when you boil it and get the grip softer first off you're gonna want to put some water into the pot or whatever and set the stove to high and then wait for the water to boil after that you set both of the grips in and you wait for around five to ten minutes after this five or ten minutes are done you take them out and put them on a paper towel or just a towel like just any towel and then dry them off and start stretching it don't stretch it too hard but just stretch it to where you feel comfortable with it i was scared doing it too because i didn't want to mess up my grips too but just make sure you stretch it out and just don't do it too hard. Now, I'll be taking off my old grips, which were the ODI mushrooms that originally came on my bike. I used to have the same exact grips I just boiled, but they got messed up, so I put on my old grips. But to take them off, you can use zip ties. So like, I would put around maybe three or four, depending on how hard it is. If it really is hard to take off those grips, just try and put as many zip ties on there. Or you can try putting alcohol on your handlebars and then try twisting your grips. Just try to be patient with taking off the grips. You don't have to do what I'm doing right now where I'm taking off the old grips. If you really wanted it off that bad, then you can just cut the grip. But I didn't want to ruin my grip. I just want to keep it so I can use it. If something else happens to my grips, like if I get a tear, I'll always know that I'm going to have a backup. I also forgot to mention that I already took off the bar ends because they were deeply lodged in there and I had no clue how to get it out. So I just used like a corkscrew that whatever you use for like a wine and then you try and screw it in there and then pull it right out. And that's how I got it off because both bar ends were really messed up. So that's just how I got it out. Now, to put on the new grips, there are many ways you can do it. There's people, I think, that put WD-40. I'll be using alcohol. You can also use water, too. Whatever you're using, make sure to put that liquid into the grip, like what I'm doing right here. I'm just putting the towel under it so it doesn't, like, go all over my floor. When you start putting the stuff in the grip, start pressing it down so everything will be wet. Since I have the paper towel under the grip, I can use that same paper towel to go wipe the bars with the alcohol and right after you do that you gotta put the grips on as fast as you can you don't want the alcohol to dry out putting on the new bar ends should be easy all you have to do is just push the bar end in and then it should be chilling in there nothing will happen and yeah you also could use zip ties if you don't have any of that. You don't have to go wait for it to dry out. So you could also try that. After you're done putting on the grips, wait around maybe five to 10 minutes for the alcohol to dry. And you should be chilling right after that. Now, this also isn't mandatory either, but I want to go put my bars back a little bit more since people think that my bars are way too way up high. So I want to go try putting it down. So all you have to do is just unscrew the top bolts on the stem 
make sure when you're unscrewing it that you unscrew it in the X pattern. So the top left and the bottom right and then the same thing for the other. You also want to do this when you're tightening the bolts too so that everything will be evened out. Alright, so if you haven't gotten your bike maintained in a while, you definitely have this problem. My bike right now is making creaking sounds from the bottom bracket and I know a bunch of people have this problem, but they don't know how to fix it. I usually do this around like every couple of months, depending on how you ride. If you ride every day, then that might be different, but just whenever you hear any creaking sounds, then you're just gonna have to go follow these steps and I'll teach you guys how to do it. I'm on the drivetrain side right now. It doesn't really matter what side you start on, but I'm starting on the drivetrain side first. Unloosen the pinch bolt, which is at the top of the crank arm. You're just gonna want to take off the crank arm bolt. After you're done that, you can pull away your crank arm and you should see the spindle. Take away the two little pieces on the spindle and make sure to wipe the spindle good with a paper towel that's dry. After you're done wiping off the grease, you can pull away the whole bottom bracket from the other side. So just grab the other side of the crank arm and then just pull. Make sure to also keep the little pieces separated so you know which side is which and what order it is in too. After you take it out, then you're gonna wanna go clean the whole spindle. Just take off any grease that's on there because we're gonna be applying new grease on there. Now you're gonna want to go lube the spindle and make sure that you don't apply too much grease. I don't really know if that's bad or not, but just don't apply too much grease. Just put enough that's on there. You don't wanna have too little because that creaking sound will still be there. Once you're done doing that, you can put the spindle back into the bottom bracket and then put the two pieces back right where it was. I tie in the pinch screws first and then I tie in the crank bolt after. I'm not sure if there's any way that you're supposed to be doing it, like if there's supposed to be an order, but that's what I've always been doing and my bike has always been fine right after that. When you also do this too, make sure you try and push all the way so that when you put on the other side that there's no space in between your bottom bracket and that it doesn't wiggle or anything. Now, after you do that, your crank arm should be on, but your chain is still off. So make sure you have your chain on the free wall already and put your chain on top of the top part of your sprocket. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to pedal forward. Now you're gonna have to do this on the other side. So I just flipped my bike the other way because I'm in a hallway right now and it's there's no space at all. I also added a little bit more grease onto the crank and you're just gonna want to do the same exact thing that you did for the other side. So just put in those two pieces or three and then push your crank arm in and then tie in the pinch bolt first and then the crank arm bolt. When you put both of them back on and already have it tightened, make sure it does not wiggle at all and that everything else is straight and make sure both of the crank arms are parallel to each other so that it does not feel weird at all. Now, I didn't do this since my bike was already greased, but make sure to go clean your chain, your sprocket, and your free wheel and put chain lube on it. I already did this like maybe a week ago, so I didn't have to do it again. After that, you're gonna wanna go check your brakes, make sure that there's still something left on the pads so that whenever you wheelie, you don't end up falling on your back because you don't have any brakes. So this all depends on what brakes you have. It's either you have rim brakes, hydraulic rim brakes, or disc brakes, or hydraulic disc brakes. For mine, I have hydraulic disc brakes. Those are probably like the best out because of how strong they are and it's much better in the rain. The model that I have is a Shimano Dior XC. It's one of the best models and it's really sharp and that's how I like it. For all of you that have a Shimano Dior XC, you're gonna have to go 
first take off the little clip thing on the other side. Make sure you do not lose it too. You're gonna have to go unscrew the bolt and you and you have to lift up the pads by holding on to the fins. I didn't even notice, but the screw on for my pads was loose too, and, and that's why you need to go do tune-ups like maybe every other month because you never know what becomes unloose because you do not want anything getting messed up on your bike at all. So now all you gotta do is put the pads back on and I'm just cleaning the disc with isopropyl alcohol so that nothing, there's no grease or any dirt on the disc so it will make your brakes a lot stronger. Start off with cleaning the right side of the disc with a paper towel and then just putting alcohol on there. Make sure you go over this one or two times and then you're going to want to do this on the left side of the disc. Before you ride, make sure that you let it sit like that for a couple of minutes so the alcohol will dry up. You're going to have to go try and tighten your pegs, your crank set, just in case again, and then your pedals, your seat bolts, your stem, and maybe your front wheel too. Now, I'm just cleaning my bike with wipes. You can use baby wipes or the wipes that I'm using, or you could also just use soap and water. I mean, it's whatever you choose. If you do have chrome on your bike, just make sure to be cautious. You don't want your bike being rusted at all if you use water or anything. But as I was cleaning my bike, I noticed that I still had some of like the sticky residue from the sticker that I removed. So I used 3M adhesive remover, which all you have to do is just make sure you put it on a paper towel, do not spray it on there to make sure that none of it will get on the desk. So now I'm just finishing up cleaning my bike with the wipes. Make sure you go over the wheels, especially the frame, and then handlebars, crank arms, and maybe even pedals too. If you do have rim brakes, do not try and clean the sides of your rims with baby wipes or anything. Instead, I suggest that you use alcohol, which is kind of just like cleaning the disc on a disc brake, but just use alcohol on the side of your rim if you have rim brakes because you're not, you don't want your brakes getting messed up at all. After I was done cleaning it, I used a detailer. You do not need to do this at all, and I'm not sure if it will be fine if you have reflex because there might be a possibility that your reflex can start coming off, but for me, it just never happened. But detailing basically makes your frame look a lot shinier. So since my 2018 Fat Ripper is Maroon Sparkle, it really makes the colors pop out more. So do not spray the bottle directly onto the frame just in case so that it does not get on the disc. You do not want anything going onto your disc. And also when you do this, do not detail your rims because especially if you have rim brakes, you do not want to go touch that with the detailer. That will completely mess up your brakes. And now I'm going to be putting on tire shine onto the sidewalls of my tires. If you have rim brakes again, I suggest you not to do this because there might be a chance that you accidentally get some of the tire shine onto your rim where it makes contact to the brake pad. And this is only just for people that have like fat rippers or any bike that has disc brakes. I'll be using foam for this one. I think you can also use paper towels, but I'm using foam for this one. But make sure, again, that you spray directly onto the foam and not to the tire because you don't want any of it going onto the desk or anything or any other moving part. And make sure you just go over the tires and, and soon your tires will start looking really shiny like it just got out of the car wash. Now for those that have leather seats or leather pads, I suggest you do this. I use leather care for my seat and my pads so the leather will not rip at all because you wanna be careful with leather sometimes. You don't wanna leave it out in the sun too long because they can start cracking and you just wanna try and take care of it as much as you can. I have the 2017 public enemy seat and the pads so I do not want that getting messed up at all. So you just gotta spray leather care onto there. So you're just gonna want to spray leather care onto a paper towel and then make sure you wipe down the seat and the pads. 
I know getting bike grease off of your hands is really tricky, so I usually use hand sanitizer and just wash my hands. I know there's people that use WD-40 or they use sugar and then they use hand soap too. It's like wipe off, like, I don't know how it works, but they just use sugar and uh, hand soap and then it, you, I think maybe that will probably be the best, but I hope this really helped you guys. Please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And since my comments are disabled from YouTube, let me know on Instagram. My Instagram is at the real Marvids. And make sure to shoot me a DM if you have any questions whatsoever. Or if you guys have any video ideas that you want me to do. I always respond to my DMs. So let me know. Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see more content like this. See you guys later. Yeah, 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 uh, uh, that nigga still live with his mom like he told Old Cougar, little bitch, little like she 40, she poured up a 40, they used to ignore me I got that paper like a book, like a story, pocket they full of blue, blue Do a little bitch super bad when they explore like gold, she wants a four, I need a lawyer Play with my money, you better not do that, woke up with some cash, I took me a cat And the trenches with some shooters like Baghdad